So what could a hotter Australia feel like? Well, picture an outlook of more days above 35 degrees. We did a series on climate change in January this year and the reason why we did that series was there was a lot happening internationally about how climate change was impacting various parts of the world but no one had really addressed in detail how it was affecting Australia. So we did a, a five part series uh, that coincided with the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change meeting uh, in Australia and we looked at the issues of health, um, coastal living, we looked at biodiversity, uh, living in the Pacific, um, it, it, was, it covered every agriculture, it covered everything. So, uh, people here in Australia could see how global warming would impact on their future and the different sectors. Um, and the reason why they were recognised, this, this series was recognised by the UN Association of Australia was that uh, they were impressed by the fact that we could tell the story in such detail um, online, on radio, we had it on AM every day, um, as well as TV at night, um, across 24, midday and 7 o'clock. So we'd had a huge audience um, and the key was explaining the science behind climate change. Well, what are some of the difficult Difficulties and challenges of covering this beat. I mean, it's controversial, and there's a you know the climate change debate is highly charged. It is highly charged, um, and as the messenger that tells the story, you do cop a bit of flack, um, whether it be through Twitter these days or emails or complaints. Um, but the way I have to address that is simply by going to the, the peer-reviewed papers, um, going to the big gun scientists who uh, climate change, where climate change is their field. I've got to stick to that kind of code um, to avoid misrepresenting um, the science. Um, I've been called pathetic and been told I should be sacked and uh, had a lot of ranters, um, you know, uh, attack me on, on a number of um, occasions. But I think the key to that is just, um, number one, being strong, but also you've got to just tell the story um, by that code. I think you've got to be careful you know, about giving a climate scientist and say a sceptic the same uh, level or the same stage. You've, you've got to remember that um, these climate scientists, uh, the majority of them are working in an area day to day and have been over decades. A sceptic might be in the likes of Lord Monckton, his, um, his credibility has been questioned very much. Getting him on the same scale and, and having a debate on national media is not right. It's to a certain extent trying to give balance is bias by giving this guy the same mouthpiece uh, as someone who deals with this uh, in far more detail and as a career. So it's not always just about giving everyone equal time? It's not about giving everyone equal time and again that's why you've got to stick to that code, you've got to stick to the guys uh, who, who it's their profession and looking also the peer reviewed stuff, if a journal or a paper is peer reviewed it's been through um, the ringer to a certain extent, it's been scrutinised by so many scientists already uh, so you're simply able to report on that. The advice I would suggest to anyone doing an environment story is to be sceptical because anything that you report as fact is going to have massive ramifications uh, for that sector. If you can, go to a second opinion. Um, if you can develop contacts within your area, you can go to someone who you trust uh, and they can certainly scrutinise. A scientist, um, you know, having said that, not a journalist, a scientist, who can actually scrutinise the story that you're looking at. But, but be very wary because a lot of these stories that might come to you, they'll come from vested interests and therefore they'll want to push their own agenda. So having a, a backup or, or a way of um, you know, getting a, a second opinion is, is a good way uh, to work out if a story is a story. I, I call NASA scientists to say, you know, is this right or is this not? And they're always willing or they prefer to get the fact out rather than having something kind of misquoted. Um, there's also the Australian Science Media Centre who can often uh, come up with um, a contact who you can have a chat over the phone and say, is this right, is this wrong, uh, where does the science stand on this? Uh, and that's the way to tell the story without uh, misinforming the public. This Airlink service will launch a new era in scientific exploration in the Antarctic. I've loved telling the stories of the environment. It's, it's such a crucial part of our existence, yet it's a story that's so often not told. Um, you know, from the people that you meet, the scientists, from the places it's taken me uh, across Australia, um, you know, to the outback, um, to wetlands, um, to Alaska, to, you know, camping out with a, a bunch of Inuits in a village um, telling the story of climate change. Um, it's taken me extraordinary places. I've, I've loved doing it. And what, what now for you? I hear you're taking a break from the ABC for a while. My husband and I are going to move to Hong Kong for um, a little while, which will be great. Um, I'm leaving the round, which is very sad because I've loved doing this job, but um, I'm going to be a mum for a little while and uh, hopefully continue doing journalism, but from a completely different perspective. And you'll be back at the ABC? I will be back at the ABC. I'm coming back. I can't leave the ABC. It's almost been 20 years, so I'll be back.